Hello, 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 hello. We are back. I'm sorry I missed on Thursday. I was away. I was I was doing a little traveling. Nothing, anything too crazy. It was only an hour away, but regardless, we're back. Hello, welcome back to Thunder and Phillies. I'm Jared. Uh, we got a lot to talk about. Um, we're going to go over the Marlin series, which was good. It was fine. Uh, and then the not so great Brave series, which is currently still happening, but it's four to one, so they're going to lose. I have no faith in this team after this weekend, after what they shown displayed, and um, yeah, just not great. Not a lot of great things happening. Um, let me. I'm just writing down a couple more uh, notes. Uh, okay, so let's get right into it. So. Game one of the Marlins series, they won two to one uh, against Sandy Alcantara. They had his number all year, which is good. Excellent. Uh, it goes against the narrative. You know, the Phillies can't be bad pitching or excuse me, can't be good pitching. Um, liars. We got him. Got him. Uh, we got Sandy Alcantara and Nick Maton with a huge two run home run to give the Phillies the lead. Uh, they had a chance the entire game to, to really break it open and they didn't they um Alcantara kind of kept them at bay and Bailey Falter honestly was matching him this entire game um Bailey Falter was, was going pitch for pitch inning for inning uh with him until uh Brian De La Cruz hit the solo home run break the tides one nothing and I really thought that was the game um you know Alcantara was just getting out of jams and, and he was working he was doing well and of course Don Mattingly uh left him in too long of course um, and the Phillies offense could have could have helped falter a lot earlier, but luckily Nick Maton in the seventh hit the hit the two run home run. Uh, the Phillies bullpen was excellent, was perfect. Three perfect innings from Alvarado, Dominguez, and Robertson. Uh, Bailey Falter went six innings, four hits, one earned run, no walks, four strikeouts. He's been excellent. Um, he's staying in the rotation. Uh, we'll get to that later with Zach Wheeler coming back, who's starting Wednesday. A lot to get to. Um, Bailey Falter is staying in the rotation, which I'm glad to see because his, he, he pitched again well today as well, um, against Atlanta pitched, you know, with Spencer Strider went, when, you know, pitch for pitch inning for inning with him. He was excellent today, but we'll get to today and, and this, these brave series. I don't have a lot of notes on the brave series. It's, it's literally going to be me just speaking my frustration to you guys, because I am extremely disappointed and frustrated with this team. Um, the fact that they, they've been so la just, we'll get to it. I'm not mad yet. I'm going to get mad. I'm not there yet, I promise. Okay, so game two. Oh, excuse me, my player of the game, players of the game for uh, the first game of the Marlins series, Nick Maton, Bailey Falter. Maton with the home run. Bailey Falter was excellent for six innings. Um, so, so yes, uh, game two, they won six to one. My player of the game was JT Ramuto. Um, Gibson, I, I hate him. I, Kyle Gibson was fine. He went six innings, six hits, one earned run, no walk, seven strikeouts. I hate Kyle Gibson. I hate watching Kyle Gibson pitch. Um, he forgets how to, he, as soon as runners get on, he panics. I hate him. Like, I'd like him as a guy. I don't, I don't want anybody to take this out of context. Like, I like him as a guy, but watching him pitch is literally like pulling teeth. And it's the same thing with Syndergaard, who we'll get to in a second. Um, it's the same thing. I hate, just, I hate him. Um, Phillies with runners in scoring position. The title of this episode is what happened and what's going on. And if anybody, you know, me, I'm a huge walking dead fan. That is a reference to one of my favorite walking dead episodes, but this is not about walking dead. It's about the Phillies. Like what the hell happened and what's going on? Uh, we'll get to that. Uh, uh, Phillies with runners in scoring position has been a nightmare all week uh, on this road trip. The double plays have been out like unreal. Uh, uh, Reese Hoskins, he was in the lineup today, uh, had that hand injury, but he's fine. Thank God. Cause I really thought that was a broken hand. And I'm like, Oh, you know, figures we've got Castellanos on there. Might as well add Hoskins at that point, because why not? Because baseball and everybody is doing their damnedest to not let the Phillies into the postseason, and you know, injuries and, and this and that, and all this adversity. And of course, Everything always breaks for everybody else except for us. Everything breaks for the Mets. Fine. Oh, Max Scherzer gets gets hurt. Oh, we'll throw some other idiot in there. And oh, he'll be great for for a one ERA. Oh, the Braves are running out of pictures. Oh, bring up Spencer Strider from Double A, and he'll be hey, I'll have a two ERA. But somebody gets hurt for the Phillies, and it's like panic mode, panic mode. And I blame Matt Klintak for that. Matt Klintak sucked at his job, sucked at rebuilding this team, and now we're we're seeing. Uh, the ramifications now because we don't have these guys, these studs that we can bring up. Dombrowski has done excellent with with drafting recently and bringing these guys in. And, and the guys who have come up this year have performed outside of like Christopher Sanchez, which he's had shined his moments, but whatever. But 
he like we're we're turning the corner with this Phillies team now. We're turning the corner in the sense that we have guys in the minor leagues who are going to be studs like Mick Abel, like Andrew Painter, Griff McGarry. Those guys are down there probably another year before we see them. But my point is, not a lot is breaking well for the Phillies right now. Uh, in the first inning of that Marlins game, coming back to it. Uh, they made Cabrera throw 33 pitches in the first, and then he had 84 pitches by the fifth inning. Uh, what the hell? Um, it was one nothing. JJ Blade singled in in the first, made it one nothing, um, and then one of the runners got picked off uh, in, in that play, but the run counted. Bryce and JT go back to back. Phillies take a two to one lead. Gene Segura had a three, um, had an RBI double, made it three to one. And then JT Ralmuto in the seventh had a three run home run to make it six one. Brad Hand just stinks. I, I hate Brad Hand. I said it in the last episode, and I'll, I'll stand by it again. Brad Hand sucks. I hate watching him pitch. I don't care how good he's looked recently, or I don't care about any of that. I hate Brad Hand. Burning the fiery pits as hell. Um, Zach Eflin, on the other hand, he looked great in this game. His stuff woo, was spinning all over the place. He looked excellent. I love seeing Zach Eflin back. I love Zach Eflin. I'm a huge Zach Eflin guy. Um, it was really great to see him come back and, and be the guy. He's going to be a long man, um, or he'll be a one inning guy because his stuff was dirty. So maybe that was Eflin's problem is he shouldn't have been a starter this entire time. Who knows? Uh, but but uh, pitching, I mentioned Gibson hand when an inning, two hits, no one runs, no strikeouts or no walks to strike out. Again, I can't stand watching Brad hand pitch. Um, he was one literally the I forget who it was, but he had first and second. And uh, uh, one of the Marlins players hit an absolute bomb. But because that place is a Grand Canyon where hitters go to die, he was caught. But I'm like, oh, Brad hand doing Brad hand things. Eflin went an inning, looked great, had a strikeout. And same thing with Brogdon uh, game. Game three. Of that series, um, Phillies lost five to three. It was a fought, it was a hard fought game. It was one of those where it just is what it is. Noah Syndergaard was fine. Like Noah Syndergaard was fine. Six hits, four on runs, one walk, three strikeouts, and in six innings. He was fine. I mean, like it's just one of those games where it kind of uh, snowballed. Um, the Phillies really, again, struggled with running in scoring position and just struggled to get the big hit. And and that's something that it's just continued to happen and happen. Edmundo Sosa got hurt. His season's mostly done, which is, you know, just add another list of things going wrong for this team at this moment. Um, and the Yankees suck. The Yankees, you know, uh, have like one of the best records in, in the American League and just have sucked the second half. And we needed them to beat Milwaukee. And of course, they, they crapped the bed. Figured, figured as soon as the Phillies are crap in the bed, the Yankees decide, oh, well, we don't need to beat Milwaukee Brewers. Their offense is awful. You're supposed to be the Bronx Bombers and oh, all that stuff. But, ah, I, oh my God, the series against Atlanta has been infuriating. But anyway, you know, we lost the last game of the Marlins series, whatever. Um, you know, because I really thought, I really thought that, you know, the Phillies would perform much better than they have in this Atlanta Brave series. And clearly they haven't. Uh, so let's get into the brave series. Unfortunately, uh, Phillies are about to get swept. The game's not over yet, but it's going to be, cause again, I have zero faith in this team positives. I'm trying to think positive here. I don't want this to be a negative podcast, but it has to be because this team is severely underperformed this weekend. And this isn't, and I understand there's injuries. Pardon me. You're without Nick Castellanos. You're without, you were without Reese Hoskins, two of your better hitters. But in every instance, these guys have stepped up and, and that just didn't happen. And I get Atlanta's the better team, but Jesus, if if you're going into Atlanta for the wild card game, you're going to get your ass beat. You, you know, you're going to lose that series in two games. Easy because you're in Atlanta and this team just struggles in Atlanta. It, it, it's like the, the deer in headlights go off and, and they forget how to play it. And, and it's infuriating, you know, game one. Game one positives, Ranger Suarez looked really, really good. He went six innings, two hits, one earned run, three walks, four strikeouts. The walks are a bit of an issue, but he was able to work out of it. He looked good. Philly's offense was not very good. Uh, you know, they were up two to one most of the game. Uh, and then uh, Jose Alvarado pitched the seventh. Again, locked down because he always is. And then... <laughs> And then the, the eighth inning happened. So I wasn't able to watch this game. I was keeping tabs on it because I was away. I was keeping tabs on, on this entire series. And I'm kind of glad I missed this series for the most part. Um, 
And I, I looked at my phone and I saw Sir Anthony Dominguez is in the game. There was like one out in the in the bottom of the eighth. Um, and I'm like, okay, we're good. We're gonna be fine. Robertson's probably gonna pitch the ninth, and then we'll we'll be good. Uh, I put my phone down. I did something. Uh, about 10, 15 minutes later, I look at my phone and it is seven to two. What the hell happened? And look, I get. Sir, some nights uh, pitchers just don't have it, and th- and unfortunately, this night wasn't Dominguez's night. His, he struggled with control. He was giving up a lot of hits. Uh, he gave up five earned runs in this, uh, and it, it happens to closers. You know, I hope it's one of them where it's just a blip on the radar, nothing to worry about. He's going to bounce back and be fine. Uh, I wouldn't say I like it, but I appreciate Rob Thompson not using one of his one of his quote good guys. He used Nick Nelson to, to close out the inning, which was good, but. Just, again, flat, had runners in scoring position almost the entire game, did nothing with it, and that was a constant through him throughout this entire game. Um, moving on to game two, uh, which was another infuriating game. And Aaron Nola, would you believe it? Aaron, September Nola wasn't a thing. Seven innings, seven hits, four and runs, two walks, eight strikeouts, and that's not bad. Like, I, I was watching uh, some of this game, and I thought Aaron Nola was going to blow because he gave up four pretty early, but then he settled in which was good to see, and I'm glad the narrative's being pushed that he can pitch in September and pitch in big games because he was good this game. He had eight strikeouts. You know, four on runs, seven innings is mo- you know more than enough. But I felt like in this game, every inning, the Phillies had runners on and did nothing with them, did nothing with them. It would be first and second. I'd go, oh, they're gonna, the Braves are easily going to get out of this inning. And the infuriating part about this is, is the Braves, because they are the better team, would capitalize on all of our mistakes. Any walk would always score on the next batter. Any any error would score on the next batter. Anything. The Braves just always found a way to get it done. And when your top guys, the guys you're paying millions of dollars to, $20 million plus dollars, like Schwarber, like Harper, like Real Muto, like Segura, these guys aren't coming up with big hits in these situations. You know, I understand that people are cold, like, Excuse me, Alec Bohm right now is ice cold. Obviously, he had the homer today, which is huge. It broke up the no-hitter, whatever, whatever. But the Phillies failing to capitalize and hit with runners in scoring positions is concerning now because it's been all week against – I get it's good pitching, but the Phillies have thrown out very good pitching as well, and they are getting blasted because these teams know how to hit with runners in scoring position. Every inning, it was bases loaded or first and third for the Phillies. Last night, they had second and third and one out with their – with two, three, and four up, and they did nothing with it. Like, what are you doing here? This is supposed to be a playoff team and a team that's competing in the National League wildcard, and you're absolutely just letting it go. You're letting your own position because you're shooting yourself in the foot right now. These next nine games are as tough as they're going to be because you have Atlanta, which you're about to get swept in Atlanta. You have two against Toronto, who are one of the best teams in the American League. And then you have four against the Braves. You might not be in a playoff position by this point next week because you can't figure out how to beat good teams. Like, what are we doing here? You know, oh, congrats. Brad Hand had a clean, uh, not even a clean inning last night. Like, what are we doing here? I'm I'm so frustrated with this team right now because they are better and and they're not breaking the narrative. They're not breaking the narrative that they can't win in September because every, all year they've talked about how hungry they are to play in September and then you just go out here and and be lifeless like this? Are you kidding me? Figure it out. Hit a fly ball, hit a ground ball, move the runners over. Hit and run for God's sakes. Schwarber can't be in the leadoff spot anymore. He sucks. He's, uh, he's okay. Yeah. The power is there, but he's not walking, you know, Bryson Stott should be the one leading off for this team. I like Alec Bohm batting second. Harper needs to stay in the third spot, move Schwarber to the cleanup. And, and we're really missing an opportunity to, to gain ground here and to stay afloat right now because Milwaukee's winning and we're not. And that's a problem. And then now we're we're currently in this game, but there's no chance they're going to win because this team is just, it's so embarrassing. Bailey Falter, just props to you, Bailey Falter. Four and two thirds, four hits, one earned run, two walks, three strikeouts. That's more than enough you need. And he earned that spot. Uh, today, Rob Thompson said that Zach, or excuse me, yesterday, Rob Thompson confirmed that Zach Wheeler is going to be starting Wednesday and Noah Syndergaard is moving to the bullpen. He's going to be a piggyback off of 
uh, Zach Wheeler, which is great to see. I love um, the move, and I love the fact that they're rewarding Bailey Falter for how great he's been in this rotation. Um, you know, I was worried because uh, in years past, it doesn't matter who the best guy is. If they traded for you or they're paying you millions of dollars, you're going to stay in the position you are, even if you suck like Noah Syndergaard has. Uh, but it's good to see that Falter is being rewarded and they realize that he's the best guy for this position right now. And thank God Zach Wheeler is coming back because the pitching's not the problem right now. You know, we always talked about every year with the Phillies team, you know, uh, in recent memory that it's always been the pitching has been the problem. And this season, it really hasn't been. It's been the opposite of what everybody thought it was going to be. It's been the offense that has absolutely looked awful for, for weeks at a time and then have a week where they would score six runs a game. But that week hasn't happened in forever. You know, you can't rely on beating bad teams to get into the playoffs. And I understand that's that's how you get the playoffs. You beat the teams you're supposed to beat. But there's no reason you should get swept by the Braves right now. You know? And I understand, like, you, you couldn't predict Sir Anthony having the meltdown that he did in game one. But, you know, I would be much more optimistic if they took game one and then and they just lost these two games, whatever. I Sure, I would be mad, but I wouldn't be this mad because it shouldn't be... I, this this shouldn't have happened. You know, it should have been, we lost two out of three, whatever. You move on, you split with Toronto, and you split in the four in Philly, and you're fine. But I'm worried that th- that they're just going to show up flat again in, in these two series, in these next two series. And then what? Do you go 0-9, and, and then you're out of the playoff race? Fix it. Get it together. What are we doing? Like this, this, I'm in panic mode now. I know all year, all, you know, ever since I started doing this, I'm like, they're going to be fine. You know, they're going to work out of this, whatever, whatever. I'm worried that they're not going to. I'm worried that the absence of Nick Castellanos is going to end up, is burning us right now. You know, because you have Matt Veerling, and I like Matt Veerling. I'm a Matt Veerling guy, but Matt Veerling isn't a player you play every day. You play him wherever, whoever needs a day off, you play Matt Veerling, and he'll give you competitive at-bats, whatever. He's not an everyday player. And I, and I feel like the Phillies front office has been lying to us because they're like, oh, Castellanos will be fine. It's just, oh, 15 days to be precautious. It's been almost a month since he's been out. Like, what are we doing here? Ever since that West Coast trip, he's been gone. He played in one game, and he shouldn't even played in that game. And then you had Zach Wheeler, who was only supposed to be a couple weeks, and he, again, another month. Same thing with Sir Anthony. So I can't believe anything they're saying. And I understand they're trying to weather the storm right now and make sure everything's good and whatever, whatever. But you can't. You need to be honest with us. Say, hey, well, things are looking bad with Castellanos. We might not see him again. I don't understand what you're trying to do by saying that, oh, everything's fine. He'll be back in a couple weeks. And same thing with this pitcher and this pitcher and whatever, whatever. And then they don't come back for a month. And we're wondering what the hell happened to him. Figure it out. Next two games, they have off tomorrow. The Eagles are on. You're watching them. Um, let me see. I think it's Wheeler on Wednesday. Um, I'm I'm just so frustrated with this team right now. Uh, we have Ross Stripling against Kyle Gibson, yay, and Wheeler against Galsman. Of course, we get two of their best pitchers because why not split? Just for my sanity and for a happy podcast on Thursday, please split. Or Wednesday, when uh, what time is the game on? It'll probably be Thursday, and we'll preview the Atlanta series that'll happen um, after because I've work at four until four on Thursday. Um, I'll record, or I might re- no, I won't have time. Uh, I'll record after after work. I'll preview the Brave series, and then um, we'll we'll see where we're at, and and hopefully it's a better podcast. I know I was very angry this game, but can you blame me? Um, it's frustrating, but just figure it out. That's, I know easier said than done, but this is crunch time. Now this is to, to, to beat everybody, you know, to, to really step up to everybody and prove everybody wrong, because right now you're proving everybody right. And, and, and if you're really a playoff team and want to make noise, you can't be pulling crap like this, plain and simple, figure it out. Split with the Blue Jays, and I will talk to you guys on Thursday. Thank you for listening.